calm does not suit us. We're born for the storm. This module will discuss various aspects of actually conducting the casualty notification. This includes the in-person notification process, handling the media, reporting the status of notification and assistance, the CAC pack, and CACO self-care. When a Marine has been declared deceased or dust one, the Marine Corps honors its fallen Marine and his or her family by personally notifying the next of kin. In-person notifications take place between the hours of 0500 and 2400 unless the casualty section directs otherwise. If the Marine was fatally wounded in a mass casualty, if the incident is reported in the news or it is known that local authorities have notified the family, the casualty section may make the decision to notify the family outside of the designated notification hours. You will conduct the notification in your Service A uniform. You will never deliver official notifications alone. Kind of had a feeling all day that something had happened. And it seemed like forever before the door opened. It was a matter of minutes. I was pretty sure I knew who was standing there, and I looked through the people, and sure enough, there was two Marines and a chaplain standing there. I mean, I think I kind of already knew what was coming, and then the, seeing them in you know, the uniforms, like you said, it was just kind of made it real. When she opened the door, she immediately clapped. You know, this, this can't be happening. This is not true. You've got the wrong house. I actually moved forward, reached down, reached out to pick her up, and the chaplain followed in behind me. We helped her up. I sat down, and they, the, um, the Keiko knelt down beside me, and he muttered the words that we have all come to know that none of us like to hear, and he told me my husband was gone. They teach you this, what to say, how to say it, but it doesn't come out, you know, you don't want to say it. Sat down with him as he sat down. Um, I was there with the chaplain and I informed him of uh, his son's death. And allow the individual to process that and go through all the emotional elements that, are, that come with, uh, with the, a notification. You really can't prepare for it until you get there and you, you meet the next of kin face to face and, and then you just do, do your best to you know, not let emotions take over, you know, especially because that's an emotional time when you're telling somebody that, sorry, your, uh, your loved one uh, passed away. And then when they're ready, they, they will look up and they'll ask, you know, how, why, they ask the questions that, that we were coming to notify. The dramatic video that was shown in this training program illustrated many key aspects of the notification process. These include the following. Always verify with whom you are speaking prior to making the official notification, even if you believe you are speaking to the correct person. Try your best to deliver the notification inside the house. Be mindful that you are delivering potentially the worst news of someone's life. Be extremely sensitive and use good judgment. Do not rush. Speak as naturally as possible. You may be pressured to respond to questions with answers you're not sure about. Never speculate, embellish, or pass opinions. Only pass known facts. A preliminary inquiry into the circumstances of death will be conducted. Families will be provided all known facts concerning the casualty incident. That first day, that first day of notification, it's not more than three or four sentences as far as the circumstances of what happened. So there's going to be a lot of questions uh, from the family, as there should be. Um, and really, we stress on the Keikos to really only say, state what they know, uh, what, what's on the PCR, because that's the official record of what has happened. One of the main things that we tell all Keikos before they go out there and attempt their notification uh, and condolences to the next of kin is that we don't embellish, we don't speculate or assume anything other than what has been reported on that personal category report, which they take with them uh, during that notification process. It's a matter of helping provide information when families have questions, because in that moment, that may be all they have control of. I remember asking him very direct questions, and he responded as directly as he could um, once he figured out, okay, she needs me to lay it out for her like this, and he did that. 
He listened and he responded to the things I said and to the things I didn't say, and he tried to meet my needs as best he could. Answer their questions, answer them as quickly as possible, get back to them as soon as possible, um, and then just just be that steady, steady voice. From this next of kin's point of view, you're the one person who has all those answers. Um, and, and they'll accept if you don't have an answer today, but they'll, they also accept and expect that you'll have the answer tomorrow. I would much rather someone, if they don't have a solid answer on something, say, I don't know, but I'll find out. I can get back to you on that. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, let me check my facts. Let me get back to you. Uh, but you'll take great notes. You'll write it down. When you're done, call Headquarters Marine Corps Casualty Section, and we'll do the best to get that answer for you and to the next again. The next morning when Arkeko came back, he had the answer, like, first thing in the morning. Um, it wasn't the answer we wanted, and I know it was hard for him to deliver it to us, but he still brought us the information we needed. When you do say, no, I don't have this information right now, but I'm going to get it to you tomorrow, uh, they start understanding you throughout the whole process, and they can rely on you, and they know you're going to be honest with them and trustful. And so that's what you're there for, is let me give you the facts. Let me go find out exactly what the right answer is, what the truth is, and so you can make the right decisions. In time, information will be passed to the next of kin that has been verified and is factual, normally in the form of a supplemental PCR, uh, which is hand-delivered to the next of kin every 30 days on um, information regarding the investigation. Be mindful of overly sympathetic gestures. These gestures can be misinterpreted in times of great emotional distress. However, you may offer appropriate comfort to the next of kin, as shown in the video. We will discuss the various grief reactions to the notification later in this course. Ask the next of kin to verify their name, address, telephone number, date of birth, and social security number. The distribution of the death gratuity payment is contingent on the receipt of this information. The Marine Corps makes every attempt to pay the death gratuity within 24 to 48 hours following the notification. If the next of kin is too emotionally distraught to provide this information, do not pressure them. Explain that additional visits, specifically within the next 24 hours, will be necessary and that you will be available to assist throughout the entire process. If the next of kin is alone, offer to call family and friends. It is best to wait until someone arrives before you leave the next of kin. Remember, a Keiko puts the safety and comfort of the family first. If you are requested to leave, do so. But if you are asked to stay, it is important to respect that request. The trust and relationship that you build during these first hours is critical. It's going to be a very delicate situation when notifying children, minor children, whether it be 4 years old or 17 years old. It's a delicate situation. And then the chaplain finally walked in, I walked in, she got down on her knees in the foyer, and her two children come walking down the stairs. Mom, you okay? And the children needed to be attended to. They needed to be distracted because they were very, very young. They had no idea what was going on. All they knew was that mom was really, really upset. So uh, to, to get them to come into the other room and put on something on the TV so that we can talk to her and, 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 and console her was very important. When you do the notification, uh, you always have to check with the guardian first. Uh, you, what you want to do is sit down with the guardian or take them aside and ask them, how do you want me to perform this notification? to this child. Ma'am, since you're the guardian, it's up to you to speak with Sophia, or we can do so. If they say, I, I don't know right now, they have no idea on how to do it, there's certain courses and ways that we ask Keikos uh, to go out there and attempt that notification or conduct that notification with that child. We advise Keikos that you need to get eye level with that child. You need to get down to them. Speak with them eye to eye. Your father was in an accident a big accident on the highway. And you need to tell the child that um, your mother or father has died, okay? Uh, that there are no danger at this point right now, okay? We gotta ensure that that child understands that uh, there is no threat to them and they should not be scared. You and your mother, we want you to know you're safe. 
You're going to be okay. The chaplain told my son because he was seven. And then the youngest stood there and his lips started quivering. And he went into the living room, which was right adjacent to the uh, front door, sat on the couch. He kept quiet. So I walked over to him and I asked him if I could sit down with him. He said yes, so I sat down with him, put my arm around him, and I said, it's going to be okay. I'm here for you. And that's when he started crying. Minor children are not notified directly, except with express permission from their guardian. Some next of kin, however, may have children present when you arrive to make the notification. In these circumstances, try to first meet with the next of kin or guardian privately to deliver the notification. The next of kin may either insist that the children remain present or may ask you to explain the death to them directly in a separate conversation. If this occurs, you should speak to them at their level, eye to eye, inform them of the death of their father or mother in simple but direct language that they can understand, answer their questions as best you can, and perhaps most important, reassure them that they are in no physical danger themselves. After the notification, but before you leave the home, provide the next of kin with your business card and phone number. As shown in the video, you can set up a meeting for the next day to begin the assistance process. After you have made the notification, inform the casualty section. Do not make this phone call in the presence of the next of kin. Pass verified information to the casualty section, such as the next of kin's address, telephone number, date of birth, and social security number. More information about the dignified transfer and the media consent form is discussed in Module 5. You gotta find the time once you make the notification to call headquarters Marine Corps and say, I just made the notification. Once the Keikos arrived at my mom's house, you know, they, they stayed with her. Um, you know, she said she was by herself and, and they didn't want her to be, so they stayed with her until I arrived. They stayed until they were sure that um, I was okay for the night. My girlfriend came over and stayed with me that night and uh, my pastor came over and once they knew I was taken care of, they would have stayed. If I'd asked them to stay, they would have stayed. And then when, when, it, when it gets to the point where we realize that the person's in a good position, that they're in a safe place, uh, that there's friends and family around them, uh, that they can be taken care of by others, uh, then, then we can retire and, and excuse ourselves and say, we'll come back and talk to them again tomorrow. It takes you a while to figure out why they're not leaving you alone, and then you realize, oh, it's because they want to make sure I'm not going to hurt myself. They want to make sure I'm really okay. So obviously, we wouldn't leave if that person you know, began to show signs of self-destruction and uh, uh, suicide, uh, we would uh, obviously call and, and try to get care given to them. And, and this isn't something that we have to do by ourselves in that capacity. Actually, one of the things I really appreciated was before they left, they actually asked permission. And I thought that was wonderful that they asked that question. It was, it was very good. All CACO notifications are different. It is nearly impossible to predict how an individual will react to the news that their loved one has died. As we will discuss later in this course, some people become angry, others become subdued, and yet others may be overcome by grief. Keikos, in essence, assume the identity of the United States Marine Corps. Negative feelings that the next of kin may have towards a war or contingency operation, the service, or the government may be directed at you during this extremely emotional time. It is inappropriate for Keikos to enlist the assistance of their spouses or other interested persons for the initial notification. Remember, the casualty section is always available to answer any questions you may have regarding casualty notification policies and procedures. As a Keiko, you may have to speak with representatives from the media. It is important to note that Keikos cannot release any information about the Marine casualty or the family. You are only authorized to speak about your Keiko duties. The only persons authorized to provide information about the casualty other than the public affairs officer, is the next of kin. Additionally, the casualty section will coordinate the release of certain types of information with the public affairs office at headquarters Marine Corps. General information about the deceased 
will not be released to the media until 24 hours after all next of kin have been notified. Be aware that the documents you carry, such as the PCR, are for official use only and are not releasable to the public or the media. The Privacy Act of 1974 regulates the information that can be provided to the media. In certain instances, to provide both accurate and consistent information to the next of kin, a CACO must work closely with the Servicing Public Affairs Office to ensure that information released to the media is vetted appropriately and approved by the next of kin. In the event that there is significant media interest regarding any aspect of the family and their casualty assistance, notify the casualty section as well as the Servicing Public Affairs Office immediately. While most installations and bases have designated PAOs, in the event that your unit does not have a PAO, Headquarters Marine Corps Public Affairs Office has representatives available to assist with media issues. So when it comes to handling the media and seeking assistance and guidance uh, for any type of public affairs event, what we do ask is that the CACO contact us first. Um, that way we're not putting them in a position where they may be inadvertently speaking on behalf of the family uh, and that we prepare them enough um, with proper guidance about what it is that they can and cannot say. One of the main things that CACOs um, need to understand is the information that has already been provided to them in regards to the personal casualty report. CACOs know the circumstances surrounding the death of that Marine, but do they know if they're allowed to present that to the media publicly? Uh, that information on that personal casualty report is FOUO, which is not releasable to the public. Normally a CACO is really only allowed to talk about what their responsibilities are, and that is their job to support the family. Um, nothing else, they don't act on behalf of the family, they don't, uh, they're not their lawyer or their representative, they're there to assist the family throughout the casualty assistance process. Everybody is going to begin asking you questions, including all the media that is going to be present. Um, they need to stick to the facts, and the facts are in this case, as a CACO, um, you can advise them of what your duties are, uh, you can take notes, any type of questions, you would relay those questions to Headquarters Marine Corps Public Affairs Office, uh, seek guidance from them. We have a wealth of resources here for them, um, and we often encourage them, um, if they have any questions, for them to give us a call first. Reporting is a critical aspect of your CACO duty. It begins with the notification and continues until the duty has been completed. Diligent reporting ensures that the next of kin has applied for and received all benefits and entitlements. You must brief your commander or reporting senior weekly on the status of the assistance you are providing to the next of kin. Be sure to report all major changes regarding the family to the casualty section, including changes in family structure, address, contact information, and pending or planned moves. In addition, other events, such as the involvement of congressional representatives or media interests, should be brought to the attention of the casualty section. You are required to use the online CACO report to document the assistance you provide. Online reporting assists in addressing problem areas and expedites feedback and real-time communication between you and the casualty section. The online CACO report will be created three to five business days after the assignment of the CACO. The initial report is due to the casualty section within 30 days after the assignment. The casualty section will review the initial report and provide you with further guidance. You will continue to access and update this report as actions are completed. Instructions on how to obtain access to the online CACO report will be provided once the online CACO report has been created and assigned. As the next of kin nears completion of the application process for all applicable benefits, print out the CACO report and review it with the next of kin. All items on the CACO report will be reviewed by the next of kin you are assisting. When they are satisfied that all appropriate actions have been taken and all applicable benefits have been applied for, the next of kin will sign the report. You will then provide the signed report to the casualty section. The online CACO report um, is a tool that CACOs uh, use to report all the actionable items 
uh, that are required for them to uh, complete to assist the next of kin. The online CACOR report is typically created within the first week of receiving notification of uh, deceased Marine. Once the CACOs and next of kin have all been notified, uh, then I will go in and create the online CACOR report for each beneficiary or family member and their CACO. It lists everything that you need to do as a CACO from A through Z. Well, Headquarters Marine Corps Casualty Section can track what the CACOs are doing uh, when taking care of the family members or beneficiaries. The online aspect of CACO reporting is vital to making sure that a case is processed in a timely manner and that CACOs are guided to do all the actionable things that they're required to do by the Marine Corps order. The online CACO report should be updated as often as possible whenever a benefit is applied for. And as soon as a CACO finds out that a benefit has been received, they should go in and update all the received dates. As soon as a family or beneficiaries have received all benefits and entitlements, uh, that's when the online CACO report will be closed. And it will also need to be signed by the CACO and that next to kin or beneficiary that the CACO is assisting. The CAC Pack is a supplemental resource for the next of kin. The CAC Pack will be delivered to you within 24 to 48 hours after your assignment. The binder does not need to be on hand to begin your CACO responsibilities. The CAC Pack contains the Days Ahead binder for the primary next of kin. This resource is intended to help the primary next of kin manage all important records and to offer other support resources. Inside, the primary next of kin will find a condolence letter from the casualty section, information on various support agencies, an honorable service certificate, and the appropriate lapel buttons. Lapel buttons for the next of kin of deceased personnel are distributed to family members of Marines who died in non-hostile incidents. The Gold Star lapel button is given to family members of Marines who died while participating or supporting contingency operations. Upon completion of your assistance, you will ensure that the binder contains all completed documents and that it is appropriately arranged and neat. Many of the documents contained in the binder will be required by the next of kin in the future. The Report of Casualty, DD Form 1300, is equivalent to a civil death certificate. This form serves as a Marine's proof of death. When a fatal casualty occurs, this form is completed instead of DD Form 214, the Certificate of Release or Discharge from Active Duty. DD Form 1300 contains the Marine's personal information, background information, information pertaining to the casualty incident, and next-of-kin information. It contains personally identifiable information. Protect it. They are going to experience things that they may not have experienced before in their lives, emotional issues that they may not have experienced before. They need to be aware of the toll that it takes on themselves about being a Keiko. Uh, they need to be careful about, um, you know, how they're feeling and, and the, uh, the kind of issues that may come up uh, within their own personal lives. As a Keiko who actually knew the Marine personally, um, you know, I had I, I had my own grieving, you know, my own introspection. The first three or four weeks is going to be extremely demanding. It'll be demanding on you. It'll be demanding on your family. It'll be demanding on your command. So it's taxing. It's taxing on you mentally. It's taxing on you physically. Something that we talk about a lot is something called compassion fatigue, where they become so emotionally invested uh, in that family that as they grieve, the Keikos get brought in with them. And it's not unusual for a Keiko to become closer to a family uh, once their assistance has reached a certain peak. I was like, I can't imagine being in that position. Like, I can't imagine having to tell parents or siblings or wives that, you know, the person that they love is gone. Like, I just, I can't fathom it. It just sticks out more when you see uh, in the news about another service member who has died. And it kind of triggers everything all over again of, I know what the next steps are gonna to have to be. Everyone who is active duty has to go through when they, when they see these things that happen. And so I've had a tremendous amount of empathy for 
everyone who's involved in the situation. You cannot detach yourself from it. It's going to hurt. It's, you're going to get close. You're going to feel that pain. You can't avoid it. Remember, the hardest aspect of your Keiko duty is likely to be the notification. Invariably, the experience will take an emotional toll on you. Talk to your spouse, a friend, or a chaplain if necessary. Do not hesitate to contact a professional if you need assistance in the days and weeks that follow the notification. Military One Source, for example, offers private one-on-one -on -one counseling. The casualty section is available 24-7 to assist you in obtaining support. Keikos need to make sure that they are taken care of as well. Self-care is always a, uh, something that's very important, and, uh, and knowing who you are is also very important in that. Make time for yourself. You gotta have some me time. Again, we ask Keikos that they recognize that within themselves because they need to be able to get the treatment, uh, get the counseling, and, and speak to the right people if they're also becoming uh, emotionally involved. Personally, it can take an emotional toll. And it's always recommended to talk somebody in confidence about it if you need to. Some people find strength in others. Some people find strength in being alone. Uh, so it's very important that you understand yourself uh, and, and how you recover and how you can care for yourself in order to effectively do that. The casualty section is available to them as a resource. We certainly will connect them with resources to assist them in if they need some emotional uh, uplifting, um, chaplain support, um, someone to talk to, and that's happened on many occasions. I personally, you know, Tony Forbes, I seek counseling. It's helped me. Fate whispers to the warrior, you cannot withstand the storm. The warrior whispers, I am the storm.